coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. Oh! Yes, nice, dude. We're chasing coconut strawberry. Plus, we'll introduce you to a young man who wants to be adopted by an outdoors family. Going coconuts for a good cause. I'm Adam Eagle, and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. And I'm Tanya Kiefer. You know, Tanya, we are up at Strawberry today. We've got some friends with us, some special guests. We, we are going kokanee fishing. We are going kokanee fishing. Adam, I didn't bring bananas today. I know everybody's thing. expecting it, but uh, due to having guests and uh, having witnesses to the incident, I figure it's better not to bring them. It's about time. <laughs> hey, we got Paul Phillips. We're helping this out today. We're hoping to show you how to catch some kokanee, maybe some rainbows. We really want kokanee today. You're going to be able to find some? I hope. We'll give it our best shot. I mean, they're there. That's actually, you know, the best fishing right now is kokanee. Okay, so 75 feet, Paul? Yeah, that's all I'm doing. We're going to show some Rocky Mountain Dodgers with some pink squids behind them and uh, shortened up our uh, leaders on them to about eight inches so we have some better action and see if we can just entice them to bite. Tommy's excited. He's never caught Good. kokanee. I hope we can get one in the boat for him. And this is Tommy. It was about a week ago when I received a phone call from Clover and Alba with the Utah Adoption Exchange. They told me about Tommy and his desire to be adopted by a family that enjoys the outdoors. We want to go about 25 feet right So now. I called my good buddy, Paul Phillips, and he didn't hesitate to offer his assistance. I work with Tommy personally and he's such a great kid. He's so much fun to be around and he always talks about how he loves fishing and hiking and the outdoors. Like I said, telling you earlier, they have really, really soft mouths. And so when you hook one, you have to really kind of play them because they can get off really easy. So we're going to drop this back. Then we're going to attach the line to the downrigger. And now we're just going to slowly drop this 25 feet. The fish are going to hit that lure and sometimes they'll pull it out of that release and sometimes they won't. So if they don't, you reel down on it and you give it a quick pop and that releases it and then you fight the fish, okay? Yeah, I've never tried kokin? Co co kokini. Kokini. Yeah. Yeah, I've never tried kokini. All right, just to increase our odds, we're going to throw another line right out the back, about 100 feet, and we're going to attach a banana clip weight. Banana. It's a banana day. Oh, hey, is that it? No. That's a fish. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that might be a coke, dude. Look at that thing dancing. Yeah. Okay, take your time with this one. That way that one's acting. That could be a coke. First fish of the day. Oh, Ooh, wow. Nothing. He's just big. <laughs> what is that? It is a cut. I think it's a. Oh, nope. He's coconut, baby! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Dude, he didn't That's jump it. at all! Nice coke! <laughs> Dude, that is a coconut. That's what we came for. And let me guess, he's too big? No, no he's, he's good perfect. Place. We're gonna yes. keep him. Yeah. That is a silver bullet. See how he's silver? Wow, that was intense. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to her. Don't listen to her. <laughs> Woo! Bye. I was just hoping you would do that. <laughs> oh, the fish, fish, fish. Whoa, what? Oh. Over here, buddy. Ah, wow, this guy's big. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Are you sure this is a fish? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's oh my god. Oh, my god. Take your time with him. Mm, wow. Oh. Holy my gosh, he's Coconut. huge. Smoky. I cannot believe that's a fish. That's a coke. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, That's man. bigger than the first. Wow. It's beautiful. You know, normally guys will use downriggers, and that's usually the best way to catch them. But today, it's been long lining. So all we've been doing is we've got a uh, Rocky Mountain Dodger, a real short set behind that, maybe 11 inches behind that. We've got a uh, Rocky Mountain Squid. And make sure you put those gulp maggots on there. Those definitely help. Then long lining, it's pretty simple. You don't need downriggers. You just let it out. We're letting it out 50 feet today, and then we're putting on this banana. That's a three ounce weight, and then we're putting about another 100 feet 
past that. So we're at 150 feet total. We're guessing we're getting down about 25, 30 feet. And uh, that's how we're catching all the fish today. That's a Coke. Oh! oh! <laughs> nice, dude! Three Cokes! <laughs> nice job! You are in for a treat. Some of the best tasting fish right there. Kokanee and walleye, in my opinion. You have got awesome fillets right there, buddy. Oh, I sure hope so. Wow, <laughs> these things are huge. They are, aren't they? Aren't they beautiful fish? They are. Now you can see why they call them silver bullets, huh? Mm-hmm. Very cool. Hey, we'll have more here with Tommy in a moment, but first, let's check out this week's climate quiz question. Kokanee salmon are a landlocked version of the sockeye salmon that you find in the ocean. Strawberry, Flaming Gorge, and Kazi Reservoirs are all great places to catch kokanee right now. The DWR has also recently stocked kokanee in other Utah reservoirs and lakes, such as Fish and Electric Lakes, as well as Jordanelle, Starvation, and Smith and Morehouse Reservoirs. Our climate quiz question tonight is, what reservoir holds the angling record for kokanee and when was it caught? Here's a hint, it was broke just last year. Now if you know the answer, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer, and while you're at it, give us a like. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our Facebook page the following week. The winner, set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. Climate, comfortable, rugged, and lightweight. KSL Outdoors will be right back to the berry. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Sportsman's Warehouse, Evanston, Wyoming, Climate, and Camp Chef. Oh yeah! Woo! Another Coke! <laughs> Sweet. Coke to the boat! Alright, I like fishing with these girls. <laughs> Welcome back to Strawberry Reservoir. You know, Paul is telling us that the kokanee fishing is really good right now, and our success was proving him right. You really can use almost any method in here and catch a kokanee. Um, I have renters of our pontoon boats all the time that come in that have a cooler full of kokanee, and we're just throwing spinners on top. So it's just a matter of, of finding those plankton clouds and just, you know, throwing some spinners at them, throwing some stuff that's threatening their plankton, and they're going to hit it. In the morning, we found cokes shallow between 15 to 20 feet deep. As the day progressed, we lowered our gear to 45 feet and found them again. <laughs> I'm guessing kokanee. I think we found the depth. Yeah, that's a kokanee. Yep, that's a coke. That's a coke. Look how he's running. Oh, oh. Huh? That's a good coke. Oh, it's a big one out there. Wow. wow! You're on fire! Oh on fire! Yeah. That's a chunk. That is a. That's one of the big ones, too. Okay, wait, Alpha, you gotta get a picture. <laughs> okay, hold him out here so in case he falls. I'm not gonna kiss him. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry is also home to the Rainbow Trout Tagged Fishing Contest we've been telling you about all summer. It's easy to participate. There's no registration. It's free. All you do is catch a tagged fish and you're going to win a prize. Everything from rods and reels to cash from the one stop in Heber and the grand prize, of course, this 22-foot Crest Pontoon Boat. There goes your first fish of the contest. To give you better odds at catching a tagged fish, the DWR put 200 tagged fish in the lake back in May and another 200 at the 1st of July. And my son's the one who reeled it in. This is our third year of doing the contest and we've seen a pattern if we put all of those tags in at the first of the year, the catch rates just are smaller. So we wanted to try Here you go. 200 in the early season and 200 mid season to see if that catch rate would go up. And it, it seems to be successful right now in, in having a greater catch rate in those tags. 100 yellow tagged fish have already been caught along with two red tagged fish. Bawa just even tagged a few kokanee. We're excited about it. Lots of good prizes to give away. And then, of course, all of those yellow tags are going to be put in a drawing after the end of the year if the red ones don't get caught. Oh, that, that's one. Adam? Two. <laughs> 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 Let's see what happens. Your dreams are going to be made of bananas. Oh, it's a two, and it's a big one. Your dreams are going to be made of bananas. Give me your 
fish! Freak out! Freak out! The fishing is so good today. Even Tanya's boyfriend Jake and I got into the action. It's a big one. This is important, Tommy. Okay, get underneath it. Yeah, Tommy! Way to go, dude! Kept the streak alive! But it was outdoors producer Jared Hargrave who ended up with the biggest coke of the day. Okay, just lift up your tip slowly. Lift it up slowly. Slowly, slowly. Oh! Oh! That's a big fish. That's a four pounder, I think. When we return, more fishing and more about Tommy after the break. The photographer wins. But first, back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. Hi, I'm Dan Smith from Fish Tech Outfitters. The new fad for bass fishing these days is a Ned Rig. I don't know if you've heard of it or seen it. It's pretty neat. You take a floating worm. This happens to be the Ned Rig worm. What it does is it floats. If you watch this in the water, it floats right on top. Now I've got a few twists on this. The jackal cross tail worm works as a Ned Rig bait too. It also floats. The jackal clone fry also floats. So this could work great on Ned Rigs. I'm gonna show you what they look like when you have a stand up jig head on them. The Ned Rig Worm stands up. The Crosstail Shad stands up. The Clone Fry stands up. Now if you're fishing a bed, it'll look like something eating the eggs, which works great for bed fishing. Now there's a misconception that Robo Worms float. If you watch that, it doesn't float, it sinks. Here's the Sculpin, doesn't float. Those won't be the best thing to put on a Ned Rig. One thing I do suggest is if you use these uh, Z-Man, do not put them in with the other plastic because you'll get a chemical reaction and it'll melt everything together. Then you'll have a great big ball of gunk. If you have any questions on any of this, come on into Fish Tech and we'll demonstrate it for you. Now for tonight's fishing line. Over at him. Whoa! <laughs> hugs. Got it. He needs hugs all around. Nice. Please don't bite me. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. You know, earlier we told you a little about Tommy and his desire to be adopted by a family who loves the outdoors as much as he does. Someone that's there for you, someone that you can count on if you ever need to. Oh, there he goes. Somewhere to go, like just someone that's there for you. Good job, dude. The adoption exchange we work on connecting families with children in the foster care system, especially children that have been lingering the system longer. Do I have it right this time? Yep. You've been in foster care or a child of the state for a long time, it sounds like. Yes. It's difficult. In what way? Well, like, you think you find, like, people that are going to, like, be there for you, but then, like, they just, like, boot you out just, like, hard. Yeah. So you're looking for something more permanent? Yeah, hopefully, but I don't know. Didn't that look like a kokanee? Yes. I think a lot of the times you think teenagers, they're very self-centered, but I think he is just very, cares about other people. It's a cutty. How everything's going with them. Yeah, he's just a really kind-hearted cut. He's know, really guy. positive too. Yeah. He's always wanting to build up other people. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and he's, he's fun to be kid. around. He's always telling different stories. And we have a, we have, you know, I see him every month and we have a great time together. And Nice. That is amazing. He's doing really well where he's, where at his placement currently. And so he's, he's a great, great kid. Tommy loves football, especially his youths. Fish, there's a fish. And he also runs cross country, but most of all, he wants a family. He's approaching that critical age and could use some direction. Nice. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, wow. If you think about it, you know, we're adults, but we still go to our parents for certain things. Oh, nice fish. Oh, yes. So those relationships are crucial to our, our well-being as human beings, and, you know, everybody deserves to have that. Oh, yeah. You know, we only spend about four or five hours with Tommy today, but you really could tell this is a really nice, genuine kid, fun to be around and uh, he really needs some guidance in his life. Someone that hunts and fish, maybe in a small town like they were saying, would be uh, great for this young man. Help him guide him into his adult life. If you're interested, would like more information, 
Check out utahadopt.org or call the number there on our screen and you can get a hold of Clover or Alba. Time now to head over to Wild Arrow for tonight's archery tech tip. Hey guys, this week I wanted to talk to you about uh, shooting your broadheads. You know, the hunt's around the corner. You guys have been shooting practice tips all year long. It's probably time to start putting some broadheads on the front of your arrow and going out and making sure they're flying and hitting the right point of impact. There's a big debate out there. We kind of see it both ways between an expandable or a fixed blade broadhead. And what I tell all my customers is there's a lot of good broadheads out there. As long as they're flying and hitting true where they need to be, that's the most important thing. So when you guys are looking at your broadheads, whether you're gonna shoot an expendable or fixed blade, you just need to make sure that they're flying the correct way. So we actually, in our indoor range, we actually allow to shoot broadheads. We have a designated broadhead target. So if you guys are gonna shoot some broadheads, come on down, shoot them in the range, make sure they're hitting the same point of impact. If they're not, we want to look at your setup to make sure you're using either the right arrows, the right fletchings, or even balancing the broadheads the proper way on your arrow shaft. It's really important. Uh, it's going to make you a lot more effective bow hunter. So if your guys' broadheads aren't flying dead on or you need any help, have any questions, you can come on down to Wild Arrow Archery. Let me or one of my tech guys make sure your bow's perfectly dialed in. Make sure you're super accurate. It's going to make you a lot more effective bow hunter. So if you have any questions, please come on down to Wild Arrow. We'd love to get you set up to go bow hunting. Thanks, Jeremiah. Boy, a great day on the water today. We're getting off just in time. Looks like a little weather is pulling in, a little wind is picking up. Let's turn it over to the guys in the weather department now to check out that recreation forecast. Welcome back to Kiss All Adores. I'm Tanya Kiefer and Adam, it looks like you've brought my boat to the marina today. Thank you so much. This is not your boat. This is the Crest 2 pontoon boat that Strawberry Bay Marina is giving away <laughs> for the Strawberry Tag Fishing Contest. All you have to do, Tanya included, come up here and catch a tag fish, either yellow or red, and you'll have a chance to win it. It's a beautiful boat, it's isn't it? It's a beautiful boat. They caught a tag fish today while we were all on the water, different boat but the opportunity is here until all the tags are gone. Yep, for all the information on how to get involved, it's free. Check our outdoors calendar page at ksltv.com. Boy, check out that mess of Cokes. Not bad, huh, Tommy? Yep, pretty good. That's a big Coke you got, huh? Mm-hmm, very big. And Jake, your first? Yeah, I caught my first. So. And it's all because of bananas. Uh, it's all because Tanya finally let him catch a fish. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Hey, make sure when you're out with your family and friends, make sure to Take a Coke and a smile, take a picture, submit it to our Snapshot Contest. Now, time for the best of the week, our Snapshot of the Week. We kick it off right where we left off, back at the Berry. Coy was out with his girlfriend, Lindsay, the same day we were there when he glanced at his fish finder only for a second, only to look back to see this four and a half pound kokanee airborne and the fight was on. Luckily, the big coke didn't spit the hook and they were able to boat this beautiful and tasty fish. Robbie and his daughter also have the coke bug, but this fish was caught at the gorge. Robbie says this is Mary's biggest coke to date, and he says coke fishing is in full swing at Flaming Gorge. Brady and a buddy were up at Pineview chasing some toothy tigers. Brady's buddy actually caught a tiger muskie earlier in the day that ended up breaking the net. Then Brady hooked up with this estimated 40 to 50 inch brute and they landed it with their broken net. This tiger muskie turned out to be the biggest fish of the day and it's Brady's first ever. Nevada Miller drew a sheep hunt down in New Mexico and came home with his first ever Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep. Nevada and his crew scouted two weeks prior to the hunt and that's when they spotted this giant ram. Opening morning they found him again Nevada sealed the deal on this 173 and 4 8 inch sheep, a giant and a great experience with his family and friends. And finally, our winner tonight introduced his cousin to the thrill of running hounds. Jesse Painter is a houndsman. Now, houndsmen are some of the craziest people you ever meet. They chase lions and bears in some of the toughest country Utah has to offer just for the thrill of the chase, the release, and to watch their dogs work. Back in March, after one of the last snowfalls of the year, Jesse took his cousin Dustin out on such a chase. The dogs were released, but instead of treeing the cat, the dogs ended up baying it on this huge boulder. It was a day Dustin will always remember, and it also gave way to a great photo op that has now landed Jesse our big prize for having the snapshot of the week. Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a commemorative 100th anniversary National Parks cast iron Dutch oven and skillet. And the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. 
Camp Chef has improved your campsite cooking for 25 years. Let's improve your patio cooking with the Camp Chef Pellet Grill. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Mm. So Tommy, what'd you think? Your first kokanee. It was awesome. It was really fun. Yeah. Did you have a good time? Yes. Yeah, and if people are looking for a young kid that wants to get in the outdoors, give you a call, right? Yep. <laughs> You're ready, willing, and able. Yes. Kid loves to get out. Hey, thanks to Paul, the Strawberry Bay Marina, for getting us out today and sure. catching some fish. My pleasure. It was a blast. Yeah. And people, if they want to come rent boats that have downriggers, they can, right? Yeah, they can. We have a fleet of uh, boats that we can put a downrigger on for you and go out and chase these, these incredible fish. So. Nice. They are, they 100 are percent success rate today. <laughs> Don't even let me catch one. <laughs> hey, don't forget the Strawberry Bay Tag Fishing Contest is also going on. Get up here and make some memories. I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors for Tanya Kiefer. Good night, Tanya. Good night, Tanya. See ya. <laughs>